This is a very special car, an iconic car for Porsche, the 1973 Carrera RS. I am really looking forward to getting in this car and getting out on the country roads. The 2.7 Carrera was the first car that had an aerodynamic device installed in it as standard on a road-based 911. And it was like we always know, it's form follows function. So the cars were getting faster and the need for downforce to generate more grip was becoming an issue because the car had to compete on circuits and it had to compete in a variety of places. It was a car that was designed and built for that racing purpose. So it was a very special car compared to the normal cars that you could buy at the time. It's the tipping point car. It's the 911 that connects really early 911s with the intent of where the model was going to go. There was that continual need to keep selling them and to sell them you've got to win races and to win races you've got to go quicker and so they had to evolve the car to fit whereas other manufacturers were bringing out new models. It just looks sensational. It does, it looks just right. Most aerodynamic aids don't look like that. The fact that it's got this Carrera decal on the side of it and it's called the RS was from the marketing department yeah. more than anything else. If you're taking stuff away on a car like equipment, they're like, oh, well, we're going to have to call it something fancy. We're going to have to give it some, some sort of coolness, you know? So they came up with a design for the side, the Carrera script, the name Carrera, and the RS, which means Rensport Motorsports. So it's really jazzed up from the looks department as well. Probably one of the most delicious sounds you're ever going to hear out of a car. We, we saw nearly seven on the dial. Yeah, well, seven, seven, three, seven, two is the uh, the rev limiter on it. So this car started life in uh, in Great Britain, even with all the spec that it has. It was pressed straight into service as a rally car in yeah. Ireland. Well, it won events as it came out of the factory with a sunroof in it. With the sunroof, wow. with the electric windows. I mean, that's how good these cars were when they were brand new. It is a quick car. Very quick car. Feels quick. Very, very quick. Very capable car. Great suspension. With these 911s, inherently they're the shape of an aerofoil. Right. The body shape from from the plan view is an aerofoil. So when you're going really fast, you get a lot of lift generating, particularly in the rear end. Yeah. Makes the cars quite unstable at high speed. Well, I'm talking about 200 k's an hour, 130 yeah. miles an hour, that sort of speed. Yeah. The ducktail clearly is designed to reduce that lift in the back and it does it really well. At the time, there was a lot of speculation about spoilers and wings and all that sort of stuff and how much of a difference it actually made. Yeah. A famous magazine at the time did a road test and they said, well, we'll try and we'll, we'll figure this out. We'll see if this is actually, this is bullshit or not, right? So they did the comparison tests of the same car over a flat run without the front spoiler, with the rear spoiler. Yeah. They did every combination and they found that with the front spoiler and the rear spoiler, it was much faster, probably about five or six or seven kilometres an hour faster than without them. It certainly means business. It's one of those engines that it sounds like it means business. It does. Yeah. It, I mean, I've got to say, that's exactly why people wanted these things. Do you know where the word Carrera comes from? Yes, I do, Dave, from the Mexican me. road race. No, not only that, it's a Spanish word. And yeah. the Spanish word means to run or running the impression of speed. Is that right? It does, yeah. So it's kind of a cool, it's a cool word. I mean, it, it evokes the meaning of what this car is, which is a fast 911. A fast 911. It's just a harmony of everything. The steering works so well, it's light, it's direct, it's nimble. The brakes are sensational. The engine is just, 
I mean, it's just a mechanical masterpiece. The sound of the car, it, its responsiveness, it, incredible for a car in 1973. There's, there's, there's not that many cars that give you such an experience. You're going to love this. And Come on. The biggest thing and the first thing that you notice is where the red line marker is on the paper. It's a long way around it's to the right. It's a long way around, yeah. And then this, <laughs> this car's clutch, I tell you, it is right at the bottom. <laughs> I can't believe he stole it. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it is. <laughs> The engineers that worked on these cars in their development period, they all were drivers. Yeah. None of these guys were just, you know, drawing room engineers. They were all guys that got out there and got in the cars and used them. You can definitely tell. You can tell yeah. in the way the car drives that someone who designed it knew what they were doing. I'll tell you what, it's a quick car. It's a Very quick car. Quick it's car. Got plenty of time. It's right there. Whenever yeah. you need it, it is right there. It is right there. Yeah from about here, three and a half thousand revs up. In a way that in a 2.2 or a 2.4, you've got to keep the taco needle right up near the sixes and this thing just pulls away wherever you leave it. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Good fun. It's a great fun I'll car. Give it that. How different is the gearbox in this car to an S? So this RS gearbox is different to the 2.4 S. Yep. A couple of reasons. Because of the torque of the engine, they've changed the ratios in fourth and fifth. Yep. Below that, you could spec what you wanted, but generally it was much the same. Okay. The gearbox has a little pump on it, a pump drive, which yeah. has a squirter for each gear set. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. The whine of the fan, that it's just yeah. that urgency that it's always egging you on, egging you on to go faster. And that's the thing about 911s, isn't it? They 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 do really. A good 911, well, any 911 makes a good driver better, I think. I reckon. When you sit behind the wheel of a 2.7 Carrera and you engage first gear and you pull away and you go through the gears and then you start to go through corners and you go back and forth through the box and you listen to that mechanically injected engine and you can't criticise the model. Somebody as mortal as me can't criticise the car. If I was a racing driver, maybe I could find something that I would change about the car, but criticising it is impossible because it does everything it is meant to do better than it's meant to do it. Given the opportunity, the car is saying, push the needle there, Benny, push the needle there, push the needle there, and you want to see and you want to feel and you want to yeah. hear what it sounds like when the needle makes its way towards the orange mark. If you are a completely hopeless car nut like we are, they're all things that you want to bank in your hard drive that you've done. I've seen the needle of a taco of a 2.7 Carrera swing all the way around to the red line. Done that and get it. Yeah, I get it. It's amazing. What to you makes that car worth over a million dollars though? Well, put it this way. That car is probably worth, conservatively in the same condition, it's yeah. worth three times what an equivalent 911S of the same year's yeah. worth. Maybe four Ooh, times. Four, five. Four times. Yeah. Okay. So, is it four times as much fun as a 911S? No. It's not four times as much fun as a 911S, which is the thing, because all of that stuff mm. that's evocative and goes into the whole iconic thing yeah. is what makes them a million dollar car. You've only got an extra 300 cc's. Really. Oh, yeah, that's right. At the end of the day, when you compare the two cars, that's a touring spec, yeah. which is basically a 911S spec. So the difference between that and a 911S is that it's got a few lightweight panels, but it's got uh, wings, wider rear tyres, and 300 cc's more. If you want to break it down to just the nitty gritties, that's the difference. So why is that car worth four times more than, a, than an S? I think that's a consequence of the fact that they didn't build a lot of them. So they ended up selling 1,580 cars by the end of the production year that they were selling the cars. So that was the end of the RS as we know it in the 73 year model. You start to make a mental list of all the superhero cars that you've ever known about. It dawns on you that this is one of them. It, it, it just befuddles you with how good it is. The collectability of it doesn't, doesn't factor for me because I'm more about the, the engineering, the history, why they did it, all of those things. To me, the, the value in that car is how it came about and that's what makes it a legend.